This is not to say that everyone needs to be on the same journey as you and you can't have a conversation with them and you can't respect them. All I know is I have to be careful of how much time I spend around them because that will affect me. I don't care how strong I am. You being a party girl, you will affect me if I hang out with you every single weekend, especially when it comes to me being an, uh, a natural people pleaser. I long time no see and what I mean by that is I haven't done a get ready with me as we chat in a long time, but listen guys, I wanted to record a video today and it's all about who you surround yourself with matters. And I was just gonna do a sit down, but I'm also in the middle, or honestly, not even in the middle, in the beginning stages of writing my book. If you guys didn't know, I did mention it. I'm like one episode of my podcast and a YouTube video, but I am gonna be writing a book this year, which so excited for that. And I've been trying to get in a routine of writing at least one hour a day like i'm trying to get back to so many habits in my life like honestly even outside of this book because i just like realized the other day i'm like i am not being the person that i need to be in order to get the life that i truly want and like i get so much done i do a lot of things but i was really slacking for a while for many reasons and we're back but with being back i have Sometimes I, I wake up and I feel a little bit of resistance to write and writing a book is literally like writing a huge paper for for school Right, and it's like something you really care about and I love it and I and I want to write this but There's so much that comes with writing a book and like just doing so much I, I'm a, a first-time writer like it's a lot. I am working with a public publishing house, which thank God because I feel like that's gonna help me so much but with all that said I really didn't feel like getting ready and then sitting down and then recording a, a whole video, which will take me like an hour, give or take, and then do, going to write. But I also didn't want to write before. So I was like, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. Because I was watching somebody on YouTube and they were like talking about how they're gonna go to a coffee shop. I'm like, you know what? I haven't gone to a coffee shop in so long. And it feels so good to my soul to think about going to a coffee shop right now and writing my, writing my book. So I was like, okay, if I'm gonna do that, I don't really wanna, f I don't wanna sit down, film, do all these things and then go write. Like I just wanna write, but I also know that I have a certain amount of time to film videos because I live in Toronto, Canada, and it still gets really, it, it gets really dark early. So I was like, you know what? As I'm getting ready, we're going to do a little filming and chit chat as I get ready. And then I'm gonna go and write the book and do what I need to do. I have a lot of editing as well. Um, so yeah, that was the longest intro ever, but I just wanted to let you guys know of that. And of course, my turban towel, it is literally called a tur turban towel by the way, um, is in because I'm gonna do my hair after, but yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna get into it, okay? But I, I do really wanna talk about this topic of like who you surround yourself with truly matters. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so out of so much of my makeup but like I'm way too lazy to go get it because I'm also like, do I really go get foundation to match my lighter skin in the winter versus summer? And I just came back from Mexico, so I'm like, it's not that deep, but I'm also like so out of everything, but whatever. Um, so I was talking to my friend Tess the other day. Actually, hold on, I need to go wet this beauty, beauty blender. Okay, like I was saying, um, I was talking to my friend Tess and she's like one of my influencer friends in Toronto. So. I feel like we like we get each other so heavily because like we're in the industry and you know we're we're constantly um building a community of people and growing our platforms and doing whatever and it's just crazy because the influencer industry is so insane like the amount of money that you can make in the industry is just like insane like even as an influencer now and seeing the, the money that I've made, um, when I hear, like, first of all, when I see the money I make, I'm like, these, the people who are way bigger than me, I can only imagine, but I also like kind of know. And it's just like still blows our mind that like people are doing $100,000 brand deals, like $1 million brand deals. It's just insane the numbers and the money that you could be making and just like doing what you love, right? And we were also talking about how like, you know, as we get bigger, obviously like we're, we're building our brands, we're making more money, like great times, whatever. We were thinking back to when we first started out 
um, outside of social media, just like working like normal, like regular jobs. And I remember telling her like, I didn't grow up around any amount of money, like ever, like nothing. I just didn't come from, I'm definitely not a Nepo baby, okay? And no shade to that Nepo babies. Cause I mean, y'all didn't choose that life. That life chose you. But I was never like, I never even got taught like salaries and like how much money like you should be making a year to pay your expenses, all that kind of stuff. Like I just like was not, I did not know. And nor was I around people who are making like 60, 70, 80K, like, 80k to me back back then i thought that was so much money and to be fair that is a lot of money like that's that's a great amount of money to be making um but like the more that you get uh, the more that you put yourself around people who are making a hundred thousand dollars a year two hundred thousand dollars a year a hundred thousand dollars a month it it first becomes like you can't even believe it but then it gets so normal like we we're talking about the numbers that we see in the influencer industry now and just like even with my agency and just like what you want to start yourself off with when it comes to like working with brands or just like the money that you make through adsense or anything that you sell whatever you you, you first like kind of like shoot very low and you tell yourself oh okay like an extra like hundred dollars here would be great and i'm just thinking like back in the, not back in the day, but right when I started, I thought like, wow, imagine an extra $500 a month from um, doing like social media, doing something that I really love, like that'd be insane. Like I thought that that number was so big. And now I'm like, that's literally, it's, it's nothing. And not to say that that really is nothing because $500 is so much for so many people. And it is for me still to this day. And it definitely was when I was busting my ass working so many jobs. But we were talking, as well about how the more you get used to being like seeing big numbers and like knowing it's possible to make like 100k a month type thing or like you see it happening all the time you kind of start setting that as your own standard now obviously you have to be like providing value and doing all these things but you get used to like seeing those numbers and and like stepping into that worthiness of, of money right and we were talking about how it's just so important that you, who you surround yourself with truly matters because if you're surrounding yourself with people who have never seen, and this is like, if you want a certain goal in your life, if you surround yourself with people who literally don't make anywhere near that amount of money, they don't think it's possible. They have weird beliefs about it. It's just like not even in their realm of existence, then it's going to be really hard for you to bring that into your existence because the truth is when we're trying to manifest, when we're trying to get anything that we want in our lives, it's very important that we have what to be magnetic likes to call expanders. You really kind of have to see to believe. Now you don't always have to see to believe because there's so many times where I haven't seen that money come in, but I trust that it's coming and you have to adjust your beliefs from that, from that standpoint. But it does help when you see other people doing the thing that you really want to do, making the money that you thought wasn't even possible. Like I, I was even thinking like, it's so funny because when we're talking like, wow, like, you know, some of these influencers are definitely making like upwards to like, like maybe 500, no, like probably one to $2 million a year. Like seriously, some of the ones that you watch that you, you would think that, oh yeah, like they make a lot of money, but you, they make so much more money than you actually even think, which that is not to say that they don't deserve any of that, right? Like, it's just like the, it's the industry, it's the work that they're doing, it's the impact that they're making and it's amazing. But it's like, you need to see that that is possible for you to kind of start setting that as your own standard. And I feel like the, the most important thing when it comes to getting what you want in your life is like really surround yourself with people who are who are doing it. Sorry, I think I just lost my track there, but what I was actually gonna say was thinking about like people who are very, very wealthy, right? Like we're not even talking about millionaires, like billionaires. Thinking about making like $10,000 a month is literal chump change to them. Like nothing to them. Thinking about making 100K a month, okay, that's a starting point for them. And I'm at a point where it's like, I wanna get to that level of 
normalcy when it comes to that type of money. And listen, I am not somebody who is like money driven. I think when it comes to my social media and when it comes to what I'm doing in life, like I, I really am not, but like, obviously money is really cool and important. And there's other things that I make sure to focus on when it comes to seeing to believing outside of money. But this is just one example, but like, imagine having like it being normal to make a hundred K a month. And like, it, it might sound so insane for you to even think that and believe that, but it's actually happening. And the more that you surround yourself with people who are doing those things, it becomes so normal to you. And it ends up becoming your experience in life because you start setting your standards, your financials, you start taking the aligned action that these people are taking. You start uh, adopting certain beliefs that these people are believing about money and what it really means to have abundance of money. Like it's, it's truly insane to me. So we were talking about that and just like, again, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing. It is so important that you surround yourself with people who are having the lives that you want to live. Now, this is not to say that the people who don't make that much money are um, not not valuable, not worthy, shouldn't be around them. Absolutely not. But you have to be very uh, aware of the influence that people have on um, your beliefs in life because everyone comes from so much, so many different backgrounds and beliefs and whatever. And I don't know, I think when it comes to building the life that you want, well, I don't think any of us want to be poor. I don't think any of us want to have limiting beliefs. So it's like, you need to be careful who you're surrounding yourself with. And I actually posted a video. It's definitely up by now um, about like really trusting yourself and coming to a decision and making your own decisions about what you want to believe in life and how important it is. And if you do not, other people will do that for you. Like if you don't decide to start focusing on ways in which that you can change your beliefs to, to, um, make hundred K a month, let's say, or do whatever you want in your life, then other people are going to impose their beliefs on you. So if you're around people, let's say you got dealt cards, like your parents, like mine, that didn't make a lot of money. Naturally, what their, their beliefs and their habits and everything is going to just be put on you. And then you're going to take that as a truth. You're going to let these people decide. And it's like, I'm sorry, but that's not going to be my life. Just because this is your life doesn't mean it's not gonna it's gonna be mine. But it doesn't also mean that like you're you're not valuable, you're not worthy, you're not X, Y, and Z. I can't listen to you, I can't whatever. But it's just to know like I'm gonna come back to myself and make the decision that I want to for my future. And what helps me personally is to surround myself with people who are saying it's possible. So here's a few things. I literally have them on a on a list. Um that I, I, I really took inventory of things that I stopped doing in order for me to kind of up level my life and have belief that I can do the things that I want, that I can make the money that I, that, that I want, that I can, you know, be successful the way that I want to be. Because people ask me, like, I get DMs all of the time, obviously, but because like, you know, like I have a bigger platform now, people ask me all the time, like, it's insane, like your growth, like you, you know, like I grew a hundred, a hundred thousand, um, subscribers in like two months, right? I started my channel. I started posting consistently in April, but I really like my channel popped off in like end of October. And from that, so anyways, like two months, people always say YouTube takes so long to grow. Da, da, da. It takes so long to grow. If that's what you believe, it's going to take you 10 years to make $1 million. If that's what you believe. And what's going to help you not to, to believe something different is to see it happening with other people and it be a different way. I've watched influencers grow in one month, in two months, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand subscribers up to a million subscribers. I've seen it before. I've watched influencers do it. I know it's possible to grow as long as you're being consistent. And the more that you really deconstruct certain beliefs about what you're thinking um, to be true about life and how things are going to come to you, watch how things change. And, and like I said, people ask me, it's insane. Your girl, blah, blah. Yeah. Because I believe that this is, this is what happened. I believe that anything was possible that I could grow tomorrow. I could blow up again and, and hit 1 million subscribers. Another thing is I back what I'm saying and I love what I'm doing. And I always make sure that is my number one focus 
out of anything because I know if I if I'm doing content that I do not love or I'm forcing myself to do something or I, I'm worrying about everyone else it's not gonna be me the energy is gonna be off and it's not going to grow me it's not going to bring people in it's not going to have a big impact because my energy is gonna be off now is every video um, popping off is every video um, you know, I have the best energy is every video, whatever. No, it doesn't matter. But I don't let that affect me. Like, I just don't focus on that. I'm like, okay, next one. What am I feeling? What do I want to talk about? Like, even today, I had this per this pull and this urge to go to the coffee shop. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to sit down then. So let me just do my makeup as I'm doing this thing. Like, I'm going in the direction of what feels good to me. And I'm, and I'm deconstructing certain old beliefs that people have imposed on me that don't need to be true. I don't need to believe that I can only make three thousand dollars a month the way that i was uh, uh, making in the past why why can't i be making fifty thousand dollars a month i know it seems crazy but the more you surround yourself with people who are making the bare minimum at that it changes anyways i'm gonna get to this list like i haven't even started this damn list i guys you know i freaking rant so much by the way my podcast channel is up and running and live so please don't forget to subscribe to that channel i post every thursday like long form it's just my podcast but you can see me as well um yeah so don't forget to subscribe to that channel so y'all can sit down and chill with me because i love to fucking talk so much all right by the way quickly i put on anastasia Anastasia Beverly Hills like dip brow. I've been putting this on my eyebrows forever. I do my own eyebrows. I shape them. It's taking me a very long time to do them. But um, people ask me a lot. Usually like TikTok, they ask me like, what do you do for your eyebrows to do that? Um, also, I used Ilia foundation. I feel like it doesn't do too much, but it just, it does enough. It's very, very light. Like this is amazing in the summertime, but it's also amazing in the winter. Like I don't, Recently, I haven't really been having any breakouts, although I have one right here. Um, and I like to wear like light foundation. And this, this is it. This is it for me, girly. And then what I'm going to do as well with my eyebrows, because I have naturally very curly hair. I'm going to, I take this like eyebrow gel, but it's not actually from Benefit. I haven't bought, actually bought one in forever. And then I take... I take Eco Styler Gel, okay? People dragged me one time for doing this, but I take Eco Styler Gel and then I put it on the eyebrows. I put it in my hair, it's the same thing. I've been using it for years and it saves me so much money versus spending like $30 on this. So anyways, all right, okay, what's the first thing? What's the first thing? Oh, another thing, when it comes to um, like surrounding yourself with people who like are doing what you want and like showing you that it's possible, because again, there's gonna be people around you that might not even be there, but they wanna be on that same journey. What I found very helpful for me is to surround myself with people who honestly believe in me and believe in themselves and and can hold space for you and like actually cheer you on and say it is possible. One thing that I will say that has really helped me in terms of like getting what I want in my life is my mom used to she she's such a good person. She is the best person that I've ever met the nicest person, the sweetest person, the biggest heart. And I say all the time, like, you know, like she went through addiction. She went through a very hard time in her life and that affected me in so many ways, but I will still stand for that woman. Like she is, oh my God, I feel like I want to cry right now. She is just like the best person ever. And okay, get it together, get it together. She has always instilled in me that I can do whatever I want. Like, thankfully, Although I still got influenced by, you know, some of the habits that she had with money and all the things that she didn't teach me or all the things my dad didn't teach me or all the things society didn't teach me because of our life circumstance. I never blame that on them because they just had what they had and that that's just what it was, right? Like I'm just, I'm not in the victim mentality. I'm just not. And people, you could, you, there's reason for me to be in victim, victim mentality, but I, I will not do it. But she, one thing has always thankfully done for me is really just instilled a level of like, you can do whatever you want. Like there's no like limitations. Like you don't have to go for to school for this thing just because I want you to do it. Like you can do whatever you want. And like anytime I give her an idea or I tell her things or when she listens to me, she's just like, yeah, like she backs me a hundred percent. And I think that that's really helped my confidence. But unfortunately, like 
other things have happened in my life and my father's influence really, really, really affected my confidence and, and my ability to trust myself. And he had that, he had such a huge influence on me that it kind of, I don't want to say completely washed out her, her amazing influence on me, but like, whatever, not the video, but she's really always been that person that's like you can literally do anything like you can do it like it's such a good idea and even if it's not exactly what you want like start again do something new like whatever and i feel like you really need to surround yourself with people who are like that because if if people don't have the ability to hold space for you and really like cheer you on that is going to affect you. You know why? Because we need validation as humans. We need it. I need you to tell me that I'm doing good. I can't, can, can, like, I cannot validate myself 100% of the time. And you need people around you who are able to do that. And I've found throughout my life, there's been people who were not able to do that. They didn't want to. They were jealous. They, whatever it was, but they, they weren't doing it. And it really affects how you look at yourself because you think, oh, maybe I am crap or maybe I can't get this thing or like, you know, you're not getting, people aren't mirroring to you what you need to hear. It's like with children, when you, when you, um, raise children, not, not me talking about literal children as if I'm a parent, I'm not a parent, like literally don't get advice from me. But I, this is what I've learned in some like my schooling and stuff too. It's like, it's so important for a child to see themselves and somebody else and for them to like be around people who are constantly saying like you can do this like i see that you're struggling right now but you can do this like i see you i see you i see you like we these children constantly need mirrors and when you are a very um neglectful parent when you don't know how to um, meet your child's needs emotionally and you're very distant and you don't reflect anything back to a child they don't know who they are they don't know what to do and that's where a lot of like narcissist like children they, they can stem from because their parents are so um into themselves like their their parents can be narcissists where this child is not getting the proper mirroring that it needs to learn about our itself we learn about ourselves through other people so i need you to tell me if i'm doing good or not like you just do so anyways not me yelling at the fucking camera but that's one thing like you gotta you gotta really surround yourself with people um who can hold space for you and and cheer you on like truly cheer you on also another thing is like oh, i'm sorry but you have to stop being around people who are not on the same journey as you listen this is not to say that everyone needs to be on the same journey as you and you can't have a conversation with them and you can't respect them in their journey because listen i used to be the person where when i realized i was on the self-development journey um I would be like, I would see all my other friends who weren't and I would kind of be judgy. Like I'd be very judgy and be like, you know, like I'd get mad at them because they weren't taking my advice. I'd get mad at them when they weren't, you know, like on the same journey, whatever. And now it's like, I don't take it personal. Like they're on their own journey. Like whatever it is, what it is. All I know is I have to be careful of how much time I spend around them because that will affect me. I don't care how strong I am. You being a party girl, you will affect me if I hang out with you every single weekend, especially when it comes to me being an, a, a natural people pleaser. I'm a people pleaser, so I'm not really gonna um, like stand my ground, although like now I would, but you know what I mean? Like you, you can't, people really do have an influence on you way more than you think, even if you wanna tell yourself they don't. So just like be aware of people who are not on the same journey as you. And, you know, these people who are on the same journey as you, like that it doesn't like for me, it's not that this person needs to be in the influencer space. I have influencer friends, but I also have friends who are on the same journey. Like my one best friend, she is exactly like me. Like she is a carbon copy. And I'm only saying a carbon copy because she's a little bit younger than me. <laughs> but we've we've had we literally are the same fucking person and we're on the same journey, but like she's not in um she's not into social media, like she does other things. Actually, she might be, but who knows? Anyways, so, and we just get each other, right? So it's like when I'm on my grind, she's on hers. Like we're, we get it. We're in this together. We're supporting each other. We're not being fucking fake. Like we're not pretending like we like each other, but we don't. Like I've had friends who literally mm, just literally ghost watched me, but you, but would call me their best friend, their, their best friend and would ghost watch as I was coming up on TikTok and podcasts and YouTube. It's like not one like, not one 
re response, not one anything. And it's like, again, like, I don't, I really don't hold grudges because it's like, I understand why it is that you were doing that, but like, I'm not gonna surround myself with you or surround myself with people like you. Okay, I was going to do, um, by the way, I just take a little brush and like clean up my eyebrows. Um, I was going to do eyeliner, but I don't really think I'm going to. I used to use, um, what's it called? Stila, like those liquid um, pens for the longest time, but I found recently I've been using NYX um, liquid waterproof like liner and that, that bangs and it's like so much cheaper than <laughs> the other stuff. And man, it's taking me so long to perfect my um, liquid eyeliner, but truthfully when I do it, it looks bomb, but I'm not gonna do it today. Um, anyways, I always, always, always use the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. I've been using it for years. Anytime it goes on sale, like I'll buy a bunch because sometimes it'll be like $15, sometimes it'll be like $10. I'll just like buy a bunch because like I always use this. Like, I'm sorry, like you can't get me to switch. Um, next thing is stop being around people who are insecure about themselves. Now, it is okay to have some insecurities here and there, right? And this is, this is what I mean though, this is why it's important because if you're around people who are insecure about themselves, even if you're not, their insecurities can bleed onto you. Like truly, once they start pointing out something about themselves or even if it's not body image, like the way that they speak or like something that they're interested in, they're cringing about, well, what if you were interested in that thing? What if you had that body type? What if you X, Y, and Z that thing? And now the insecurities are just bleeding onto you and now you're like second guessing yourself. You're like, oh my God, maybe I should fix my hair more often. Like I remember I had this one friend, like she literally could not leave the house um, without looking like absolutely perfect. And listen, if that's you and that's your vibe and you need to look like that, then amazing, right? But the way that she would criticize herself was like, sometimes I would second guess myself. I'd be like, okay, now I feel like I can't go out looking the way that I do, especially around you, because if you think that about yourself, then what are you thinking about me, you know? And it's just like, it, you're like, these people are making you second guess yourself. So it's like, I don't know. Try your best not to be around people who are super highly insecure, um, because I just don't think that helps your growth, really at all. The other thing is stop being around people who don't really think like you. Now, nobody's ever really gonna think exactly like you because we have different biases, we have different beliefs, religion, whatever. And I, this is not to say to separate yourself because I wanna be very careful with what I say here. You don't wanna surround yourself with people who only think like you and then you become a narcissist, right? But like really and truly, like if people have, okay, the, I'll bring it back to money thing. If I'm surrounded by a lot of people who think the only way to make 100K a month is for you to literally work 100,000 hours in a week and like bust and grind and literally no sleep and like no self care and no whatever and that is the only way, then that's literally how I'm going to now go through life and like try to make money. Versus if I was around people who have made 100K like doing that, uh, sorry, doing it a different way, which there are people, so many people, um, and they, they have a different approach to life, you know, like people who care about their emotions, people who care about their body, people who care about their health and wellness outside of money. Like it's not just about hustling. It's not just about this, that, and the third, but they also believe like, you know, this is possible. I can do this in this way and I can create systems where it makes it possible for me to make X, Y, and Z. That's, that's a good person to be around, right? And again, like you, you really pick up the beliefs of the people that are around you. And I've seen, again, it comes back to like, if you're a people pleaser, it's gonna be like even more important that you do these things because if you don't, you're just automatically gonna take on other people's shit as your truth. I'm using my tweezers to tweeze a few pieces of my mascara together. I mentioned this in one of my videos before. Someone was like, I was wondering what you're doing. I don't know, it's just something I've been doing since high school. Just a little one too, you know? Um, but yeah, like I just think that even when it comes to relationships, right? You think about it in relationships, you're not gonna date somebody who literally has like the completely opposite views on like political parties and like what it means to be a parent and how to parent and you know, just life and you know, like how the, how the world is constructed. Of course, you, that can absolutely work, right? But it, you gotta like find your own balance with that but i think why not if you're trying to be like successful 
if you're trying to like create the life that you want, which I feel like we all are, be careful who, like surround yourself with people who are thinking the same way, like really. And of course, it's always good to have that influence of like thinking another way, you know, you wanna be critical. You wanna be critical of how you're thinking and you know, you wanna introduce new ideas and stuff, but just make sure that you're, you know, surrounding pe yourself with people who get your, way of thinking in life. I was gonna do my makeup because I was gonna do a sit down video, but because I'm not, I'm just like, I'm really just like, I'm kind of done, you know? Like, I don't really need to do much. Like, do I really need to do a highlighter? No. I also like, don't even know if I wanna put in my hair piece because I'm just gonna go to the, um, I'm gonna go to the, can I speak? Coffee shop, coffee shop, Jesus. All right, let's see if there's anything else on this list. Okay, actually first, let me just see what I wanna do with my hair. I don't really know. I'm just thinking, honestly, I'm just gonna put my hair in like a bun. It's already kinda in a bun, but it's kinda like gross. Um, what I usually do though, I'll just tell you guys, if you're interested. When I wanna have a slick back ponytail, the ones that you guys like always see in my videos. This is from Luxie Hair. It's like a $300 piece of hair, but it's, the, a gem, it's a little bit gross right now, but whatever. Um, what I do, to, especially because I have curly hair, if you have straight hair and, and you just, you're blessed with like <laughs> less coarse hair, um, I love my hair, but like it's a lot. Then what I do is in the shower, I will section my hair and like make sure my hair is brushed out, okay? And then I'm taking my, my brush and I'm brushing my hair all the way up to kind of like that, like, you know, like a middle. Um, edge and I'm really slicking it back. Like I'm making sure that my hair is not gonna be poofy. Again, this is really more for the curly girls, um, but the poofy, like you really want a slick back bun, you need to make sure you're brushing all of your hair back. Like there's a difference between you just like throwing your hair back and you can tell that the bun is bigger versus like whatever. You need a brush and you need to slick that back, okay? And it's easy in the shower. And then what I do is like, I put my hair in a um, big bun usually, or a small bun, sorry. I usually make it really, really tiny in the shower, but I just didn't today, cause I was just like slacking. Uh, I'll make it really, really small and then tie it a few times. And then that allows me to put this like over my hair, like that. And then like whatever, and it looks amazing. Right now, didn't look that cute the way that I just did that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, oh, sorry. Before putting on the ponytail, I completely skipped what I just, wow. I'm not a get ready with me type of person, okay? <laughs> I use got to be gel. This is very heavy gel and it's gonna keep your hair slick, but it works. And what I do is like, I just put on my hair and I take this like flat, I don't know what this is called. And I slick it all the way back, like all the way back, which actually, what I'm gonna do is gonna use my Eco Cellar Gel today because I'm not, I don't need my hair to be like slick back and the flyaways to be, this is just not as heavy. But it's like, I don't know, I think it's just like lighter and like a little bit easier on your hair and I'm not doing much today. So anyways, I'll just show you guys. Um, and then I'll put like a little headband over top of my hair and let that dry. Like, so to make sure that my hair is like really slick, I'll put a headband on and then I'll take it off and put the, the ponytail on. That's what I do for my slick backs. We love it. And I was mentioning, and I don't even know if it was a podcast or my, yeah, it was the podcast. I was like, guys, I need to come up with a new hairstyle. Cause like, I can't just be slicking back my hair all the time. Although like I do make sure to have, um, you know, like self care nights and like deep condition. I deep my condition my hair every single week. Um, and I don't put my hair always like this. Like sometimes I'll leave my natural hair out completely and just, let it breathe, but yeah, whatever. Today it's a chill day, so like I'm not really even gonna do much. I just wanna look like somewhat presentable, you know? Not even, because really and truly I look the same. If I were to not do what I just did, I actually look the same. And then usually what I do as well is I take like a small little brush. I don't even know if you can see it, but it looks like a toothbrush, but it's not. And then I'll just like do my edges a little bit. I don't, I'm not really an edges girl. I kind of just like slick it back a little bit. I literally, my edges look straight once I do this, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just me, you know? And so what I'll do, honestly, I usually gonna put the headband, but screw it. Who cares? You know what? Who cares? Sometimes you just have to not care, you know? Okay. And guys, I'm a scrunchy girly. I don't know about you. You probably are. 
So I'm gonna just take out my hair real quick and then redo it. Okay, wait, last thing as I'm doing this, like, come on, talk while you're doing this. Um, I stopped running, what? Oh, I stopped surrounding myself with people who complain and play victim. This is huge, again, because if people are complaining about how life is happening to them and, you know, like, everything's in the way and I can't get what I want, it's just gonna bleed onto you, like, naturally, it just is. And, again, if you're a people pleaser, you tend to agree with people, you tend to, like, whatever, even though not in, in your heart you're like, I don't want to believe that. And, again, like, there is a level of, like, sometimes you are gonna be around people who just complain and you just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, but, like, you don't have to take that as your truth and that's what I've learned. It's like, even if I am around people who complain, because you can't really get away from it completely, it's like, okay, well, that's not my truth, so whatever, like, that's your life sucks to be you i guess i don't know like and again this the victim mentality i have a whole video on that actually i'll try and find it it's like an older one i can make a new one too but i don't know my my personal experience has led me to realize that being a playing the victim doesn't do anything and i've had many circumstances in my life where i could have played the victim this is not to say that you have to ignore what has happened grieve what has happened cry about what has happened play the victim for a moment, fine, do that. But if you are constantly crying about how prices are so high and I can't do this and no opportunities here and all men are trash and X, Y, and Z, how on earth do you think that you're going to get the thing that you actually want if you're complaining all the time? Sit with that for one second. I really want you to tell me how it is that you could possibly get the life that you want when you are complaining about what you don't want. I wanna know because I have never gotten anything in my life by complaining and playing the victim and crying about everything. You know how I've gotten what I've wanted in my life? By deciding what it is that I want in my life and taking aligned action and fixing the beliefs that have gotten in the way of me getting the thing that I actually want in my life. That's it. And like, obviously that takes lots of work, years of healing, this, that, whatever. But it's at the end of the day, like the first thing is, is like, do you want to be a creator? Or do you want to be a victim? And I'm just, I'm not here for it. And one other thing I'll say is people who are successful are not complaining. People who are freaking successful are just not complaining all the time. They're just not. <sighs> And listen, there's, there's gonna be people who might make money but still complain, but they're not happy. And I'm sorry. I wanna be rich and I wanna be happy. So that's just that on that. Okay, I think that's like really it. Oh, I wanna wear this. Okay, this guy um, that lives around me, actually, he has a brand, it's called Life is for the Living. And I will link the, I'll have his link down below. Um, he gave me, he, he gifted me these two sweaters. I'll show you them. Um, this one, they're actually such nice sweaters, guys. Like, actually, the quality is insane. Okay, so there's this one. It says on here, life is for the live, life is for the living. Tomorrow is today. And then on the back, which I think is just so dope. Like, I love this shit. I love this shit. Life is for the living. And then it has like little messages. And like, this is like the messaging on here was like from his grandfather, I believe. So I don't know. I just think he just launched it. And I think that it's just, I love the messaging behind this. And I think honestly, the era that I'm in right now is like having to remind myself, like life is for the living, like go live your life. You don't always have to be working and fixing yourself. Um, anyways, he sent me a, a black one as well. It's literally the same thing. Um, and I want to wear the white one, but I just wore put makeup on and I don't want to ruin it. We're not going to do it. We're just not going to do it because it's a good sweater and I don't want to ruin it. So <sighs> fine. It's fine. So cute. So cozy. And that is actually, you know what? Moonlight guys, Ariana Grande Moonlight. Don't, don't freaking play. Just don't. All right. I think that's it. You know what? It is what it is. I'm literally just going. Okay. So there's like, I really like second cup, but I also like Starbucks and I also like Aroma. I think I'm gonna go to Aroma. Aroma Espresso Bar. 
because they do have like good coffee guys i can't wait to move to the city i'm moving to the city if you guys didn't know um in april and i'm i'm really i'm working on manifesting a really beautiful beautiful place but until then, I only have a few spots to go to, but I think I'm gonna just go to Aroma. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just something that I've been thinking about. It's just like, the more that you really surround yourself with the people who are getting what you want in your life, people who are showing you that it's possible, people who are uplifting you and holding space for you and like truly rooting you on and like validating you, that is that has really been something that's been so helpful and has really helped me like quantum leap in my life. Like not just like slowly here and there, like, you know, get a little bit more successful, but it's just like keep surrounding yourself with people who are, who are doing the thing that you've never done before or that you are you're too scared to do you know and honestly it can even start because some people will be like well i don't know what where these people are the first thing for me was i was watching people on youtube i was watching people who were big on youtube that grew quickly that was talking about certain things that i really love and i was like wow like i could do this like this is what i want to do i have watched a lot of people on youtube social media in general from a very young age and i just always remind myself like Literally anyone could make a platform. Anyone can do anything online or in real life, like really and truly, if you believe in yourself and if what you wanna talk about is what you wanna talk about. And obviously it's gonna take you being resourceful and researching and Googling. And another thing that me and my friend were saying is like, we are so freaking blessed to be in this day and age right now where we have the internet you can do so much more things that were not possible back in the day for your parents and bringing it back to not taking on your parents beliefs about money or like how to make money in this that it's not a level of disrespect it's really just seeing like this is a new day and age i can learn how to make money and do things that i want a new way and maybe some of your tips can be helpful because of course like not everyone comes from parents like i just did like i did but it's to like really take a critical look and be like, okay, what do I want to decide about how I want to live my life and what I want to believe? And reminding yourself like there is options, like you can do whatever you want in your life, you really can. And the more we focus on the negative, the more that we focus on the thing that we don't want happening, the more we're going to get of that thing. It's just, it's literally what happens. You continue to focus on something, this is what happens. Something bad will happen in your life and what we are primed and we are so used to doing is we focus on that negative thing. We dwell, we overthink, we, we get in scarcity mindset, we get into the victim mentality, whatever it is. And that feeling state affects the way that we either get up out of our bed or not get up out of our bed. And so when something is happening in your life that's maybe not desirable, like the fact that you had certain parents or you don't have money, whatever, it's not that useful for you to continue to focus and dwell on the thing that you don't want happening versus actually focusing on, okay, you know what? Yes, this happened. This is not ideal, but I am going to put my focus somewhere where I'm going to be able to take the proper action to get the thing that I actually want in my life because you don't take aligned proper action, the right action when you're focusing on the negative. When you focus on the negative, let's say some, a man is um, pulling away, right? You're texting him and like, you know, you can just tell the energy is switching. What you usually do is you hyper focus on this thing and then you go closer to him and you keep texting, you double text. Why you do this? Why you da da? What does that do? That literally only pushes him away. But also all your attention now is coming here. You're not taking aligned action. And what the, the proper action really would be is to, okay, I don't really know why you're doing this, but I'm not even going to ask you because you know consciously that you're pulling away for some reason. I'm going to put my focus and attention into myself, into my life, into my health, into the million things that I've probably been putting off because I've been so obsessed with you and I'm going to realign myself. And when you realign yourself, you have more self control. You have more self worth. You open up opportunities for you. So even if that person doesn't come back, well, you have a million other guys that are going to be knocking on your door because you're confident, you're self loving, you're putting yourself out there, you're living your life. Instead, what you're going to be doing is obsessing over this guy, pushing him away. You're in this low self-worth. Well, you're not going to attract any new man. 
you're not going to attract any new opportunities that would make you feel really happy about yourself because you're so obsessed with this thing. So it's like, in my opinion, when things, let's say, are not desirable that are happening in your life, let's not okay sure analyze it if you want like you don't have to ignore it sit with yourself let yourself cry whatever but it comes to a point where it's like okay you are going to have to be the one that makes that decision what happens in your life is it going to be this or is it going to be this i hope you guys enjoyed please don't forget to subscribe to this channel alicia gogan and also my podcast channel the glow up secrets podcast the links will be down below i hope you guys enjoyed and let me know how you like this style of video, I guess. I don't know. I, I ran for so long that it's like, sometimes I can't even do both, but whatever. We'll see. Okay. Love you guys. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.